I am really enjoying delivering this series of webinars, uh, explaining some of these conceptual things about DevOps and continuous testing because I like this uh, uh, subject a lot these days. So uh, let me take you through what is the role of BDD, what is really BDD, and uh, from a DevOps standpoint of view, why it's important. So if you look at uh, the BDD or earlier days uh, from the XP, X, uh, that uh, uh, XP is uh, extreme programming model. From that time onwards, people have been talking about uh, a technique called TDD, test driven development. Then uh, some people uh, last 10 years back and 10 years onwards, uh, people have been talking about ATDD, acceptance test driven development. And almost uh, six, seven years onwards, uh, we have been hearing this new term called BDD, behavior driven development. And why it's relevant? So, just to get going with that idea, if you look at uh, world over, Agile has taken over. Agile adoption rates are more than 75% today in the world software engineering team. Yes, some teams are able to apply Agile in a very matured way. And still some people are learning how to apply Agile. And that's where actually a lot of people still talk about Agile fall model, water Agile model, variety of the things people are kind of struggling with. Some leading uh, companies have really perfected it. But if you look at test automation inside an agile engineering approach, it is actually having a lot of issues. What are those issues? Typically, when we do an iterative incremental development, capture a set of requirements, convert them into user stories, and then start developing them in various sprints, if you look at this graphic, let's say we have four sprints we have planned to build a software. And over various sprints, we develop different components. If you look at some of the components that are developed in the sprint one, it gets stabilized by the time it goes to sprint two. And our idea of test automation has always been to approach when the software is stable or a feature or a component is stable and we have a user interface then only we can automate because of that assumption because of that way of working uh, or at least uh, that kind of thinking has been driven to us by the old uh, tool vendors because of that in agile we are not able to automate uh, within the same sprint where the component is developed Always testing is lagging behind by few sprints. If we are kind of trying to automate a component that has been created in one sprint, it will be can be automated only in the next sprint where it got stabilized. If you look at here, there are three components which make a feature. And if we want to really automate uh, the features end-to-end -end functionality, then I can start the automation only uh, at the beginning of sprint four till the time out of wait. So this actually is causing a big issue for Agile teams, especially the Agile teams who are embracing the CI, CD, and DevOps way of uh, releasing software, actually making software and releasing software. So how do we, so look at from the point of view of challenges. So for Agile success, actually the teams must address some of these challenges first actually, you have to understand why this challenge is happening. So if you look at it, as I told you earlier, testing after code complete leaves little time to stabilize the code because test automation can start only after code complete. In fact, even manual testing also happens after code complete, that is the issue. Then if you try to kind of implement a CI CD mechanism and run your tests very early in the sprint life cycle and also uh, often every time a build is created every time a code is changed uh, a new build is created and every time a new build is create, created you want to run a set of good automated tests which assert that build uh, so that our confidence on that build 
is increasing then uh, if you depend only on manual testing manual testing is slow and also it's very costly so you cannot do testing early and often that's why you must uh, figure out a way to automate as early as possible in your sprint so we have to achieve some in sprint test automation objectives otherwise we cannot address this uh, especially the continuous delivery uh, oriented way of software engineering similarly as i told you if you focus only on user interface driven tests they are inherently slow execution and they are very fragile because they are leveraging the user interface of the application which changes very rapidly so the tests uh, will become very flaky and you have to keep on maintaining your tests and that is another challenge if you that's why you have to figure out how do we not only in only uh, very very necessary important conditions only gui tests have to be used how to leverage other touch points of the application so that we can achieve early automation and automation that executes faster and also whatever tests we have in a ci cd pipeline if you want to kind of trigger them and execute them and wait for a verdict and uh, stop development till uh, the problems in the test run have if at all they found are fixed if you want to achieve that kind of an environment that is automated orchestration uh, within the ci cd pipeline then uh, without automation without new way of automation we cannot achieve that so these are the challenges people are facing uh, across all agile teams and that is where actually this new concepts are coming if you look at let's say you wanted a little bit different way of software engineering and you created a ci cd pipeline so typically in a ci cd pipeline uh, as soon as the code is changed and committed to uh, the version control system if you have integrated with a server like jenkins it pulls all the changes and if you have written a batch script it automatically builds and if you have already created a set of commit stage tests like some static analysis or some unit tests and you have put them inside the batch file they get automatically uh, either on a, a ci server or in a development environment that you point to then people are also talking about okay you have uh, integrated ci and build and uh, unit test has been automated but can i release that build do i have enough confidence about that build that i can uh, if required i will deploy to production only with unit tests we may not get that kind of confidence that is where actually we have to extreme programming model started talking 10 years back about automated acceptance tests so there are there is a difference between what are unit tests and what are automated acceptance tests we'll talk about that in a little while but the test first or test driven models are very very appropriate for both unit tests as well as automated acceptance tests so today we are talking about vdd from the point of view of doing automated acceptance tests and shift them left and be able to use them to test early and test often that is where actually the thinking of vdd is very important or sometime back people started calling it as actually atdd atd atdd stands for acceptance test driven development so our focus is on acceptance test stage so really what is an acceptance test stage so as we develop user stories every user story will be having its own acceptance criteria so if you look at one user story is one acceptance criteria and you tested it then an individual acceptance test actually the intention of the test is to verify that acceptance criteria of a story or a requirement have been met so if the acceptance criteria is very well understood and we have a set of tests that will assert that uh, that story is meeting those uh, acceptance criteria then we have achieved uh, 
acceptance test for an individual story. So acceptance test again need not be a functional acceptance criteria. Lot of times there will be non-functional criteria also can be taken, like some performance related criteria, security aspect, we can put it. So if you have a set of user stories, a lot of uh, acceptance criteria linked to each of user stories, and you have created a test suite uh, with all those acceptance criteria, then the acceptance test suite as a whole, it actually both verifies that uh, the application delivers the business value. Uh, and that is the key about acceptance test. So today, as we are talking about VDD, our focus is on acceptance test phase because in a CI CD environment, automated acceptance tests deliver very, very high value for an agile engineering team because they build a great confidence about the software changes that have been made by the agile team by accepting them very early and we can use them very often in the every time a build is made in a day if there are two times build is made we should be able to run all these tests so these tests have to be inherently uh, they have to be reliable they have to be executed very fast so that is why a new way of thinking is a must for us so a lot of times a uh, lot of teams and actually i have seen architects the tech leads and sometimes the scrum masters they argue that uh, okay within the ci cd pipeline we have a good set of unit tests and uh, we are able to execute them fast so why do we need with the acceptance test to be inserted within the ci cd cycle but there is a difference between the unit tests and acceptance tests what is the difference acceptance tests are more business facing tests and unit tests are developer facing both have their own place both are important but we have to understand the difference so if you look at from an acceptance test point of view the test actually it tests the whole stories at a time against a running version of an application in a production like environment so when by the time a build comes to acceptance test you are kind of deploying the build that has passed the commit stage tests into a different environment and if you can make the environment production like then very early in the life cycle the software is kind of verified uh, with business facing tests and it is verified on a production like environment that is a real power to a software engineering team whereas unit tests they, sing, they test only a single part of the application like a class or a small part of the software and if you look at from an objective point of view the acceptance tests the aim their aim is to prove that the application does what customer meant it to do it's a they are more customer facing tests those are very important whereas the objective of a unit test is okay whatever developer thought the code should do the developer coded and it proves whatever developer intended it is working so that is the difference so before acceptance test technical tests like unit tests are important but a build if it passes a set of unit tests it doesn't give a lot of confidence on the build for us that uh, it will work well if a customer uses that is why automated acceptance tests have become extremely important and they also have to be put within the ci cd pipeline that is where the continuous testing happens that is where actually the old way of agile test automation will no longer work if we kind of stick to the old way of agile test automation, we can't uh, achieve the continuous testing kind of features in your software engineering. So I just tried to take you through what is the importance of this automated acceptance test. And if you have to achieve a good CI, CD continuous testing objectives, why you should automate them in a little different way during the sprint itself and integrate them within a ci cd pipeline so with that maybe to make a little bit more interaction with all of you i have a set of questions here you have to answer uh, maybe you can answer in your mind also but if you are wrong you think why you are wrong so let me 
talk about this question so so far we talked about automated acceptance tests so i want to check your knowledge on that so the first question is automated acceptance tests catch serious problems that unit or component test suites could never catch so the answer is yes or no you have to tell me yes or no so uh, what do you say is it yes or no yeah it is yes. yes very good thank you very much i want this interaction okay the second point is unit tests created through tdd because tdd focuses on unit testing there enough to protect against regressions true or false false it is false lot of developers lot of technical people sometimes argue that hey it's okay we have tested uh, programs very well why do you bother about other aspects business facing at this moment yes they cannot actually guard against regressions for you though they have their own value the third point is automated acceptance tests deliver business value the users are expecting as they test user scenarios yes or no yes yes okay yes. good thank you that's good then automated acceptance tests are too expensive to create and maintain this no. is a tricky question no so no yes. what do you say no automated acceptance tests are too expensive actually test automation is too expensive because you have to uh, deploy people with right skills you have to put effort the people are expensive the effort is expensive so automation is expensive and when you are telling automated acceptance tests early in the life cycle in sprint automation definitely is expensive but think about like this let's say we don't do that what will happen let's say we don't have automated acceptance test we are only depending on old way of test automation and still doing it then and till four sprints uh, till software is completely done we don't automate so you have to spend lot of effort on manual testing if you have to achieve your continuous delivery objectives that itself is more expensive and the risks about your quality if you don't have enough uh, people enough effort because you are depending on manual things then you are don't have automation also then you are actually still releasing it with lot of defects then how much expense will happen so given that i agree that automated acceptance tests are going to be expensive and again poorly done automation is more expensive different but if it is a done in a good way using right approaches with right technology uh, then this may not be uh, this may be false that's why i told it's a little bit tricky thing okay let me go to the next one automated acceptance tests run and passed on every build helps into the software delivery process yes or no yes sir yes. that is the power of actually automated acceptance tests if they are kind of run very early and we are proving a system every change every build we are able to use this test to prove the build something or not so let's say i make changes and commit to the uh, version control system two times a day my engineering team is doing both the times these automated tests are, tests are automatically triggered and it is giving a verdict okay it's passed second time the build failed but if i get those results very fast and if they are good tests the amount of power that i have about quality is really great so it is yes last one testers developers and customers need to work closely to create good automated acceptance test suites we agree yes. or not yes we yes. agree so because again when we are talking about acceptance criteria they are more business facing so this is a good collaboration amongst the product owner the developer the tester at the right time they happen they create uh, so typically features are user stories are written at a high level and similarly at a high level the acceptance criteria have been notified but if we can brainstorm on each acceptance criteria and you kind of 
brainstorm and arrive at some real examples how end user uses and achieves his acceptance criteria build all those uh, examples concrete examples and try to convert them into your software specification so for that that specification is used to develop the system by developers and the same specification is used by testers to automate testing that is real power of uh, the approach and the power of approach can really solve your automation challenges in an agile environment so that is yes so thank you very much so now to solve this agile test automation challenge as i told you from many years people have been talking about what we call this test first methodologies as i told you many test first methodologies are there but what is the fundamental thing in a traditional approach we code and after coding we test test that is very logical and natural so but to achieve some of this or overcome some of this uh, uh, agile te test automation challenges agile testing challenges people have come up with a little bit different approach they tell you do test first or you automate it test first and then only you code which is a little counter intuitive we cannot easily comprehend but that is where the world over lot of methodologies techniques have come so what are the leading methodologies tdd is actually test driven development the ex extreme programming people have come up with it and people lot of good teams also struggle it's not a very easy and it is more focused on the unit testing and uh, how do i develop code uh, by thinking testing first and then only code so i'm not going into details of each of the things and then uh, because tdd is more focused on unit test and by developers it's all technical jargon and technical language uh, why don't we even uh, think about test first from a little bit functional tests that is where actually atdd approach came acceptance test driven development so you, you for each user story the acceptance test criteria using those acceptance test criteria you drive your development don't write code directly first uh, so that's where actually the tools and uh, frameworks such as fitness and all of them and again they are also tough to use but a lot of good things have perfected it now nowadays people are talking about bdd behavior driven development dan north and all these people have come up with this bdd and some people tell that uh, the adoption rates of tdd and atdd are not so good and the reason for them not so good is the word, the letter t what the letter t stands test all the engineering teams developers somehow they have uh, issue with the word test maybe that is uh, kind of in inhibiting them to use these approaches that is how uh, dan north removed that t there and started calling it as bdd behavior driven development meaning when you kind of come up with a set of requirements and you have created some user stories now before you start jumping to development you pass take a pass bring all the stakeholders into a single place like the product owners the developers testers and look at the user story look at each of the acceptance criteria mentioned for the user story and then create a meeting typically in bdd uh, terminology there is a meeting called three amigo meeting who are these three amigos the product owner the tester the developer typically what happens in that meeting they look at each of the acceptance criteria then they talk about some examples like real world a real user how they will use this feature and they using those concrete examples they look at the acceptance criteria so in the discussion there will be lot of these examples will come which can be converted into what we call dsl domain specific language or ubiquitous language because the problem with these three stakeholders product owners testers developers they don't talk common language domain people talk lot of domain language and developers don't understand that developers talk about lot of technical jargon testers are in between so how do we 
convert all these conversations that happen to understand each of the user story and their examples concrete examples there is a, a syntax created we call it actually gherkin semantics and syntax using the gherkin language you can capture all these examples concrete examples and put them into a tool like cucumber or specflow based on which technology you are you are using and then use those specifications we call them specifications by example or concrete examples put them into a good language that is understood by all the stakeholders and figure out technically how i can use those descriptions uh, to execute those specifications and achieve my automation that is where we are telling executable specification i'll go through that but the test first techniques have evolved and that is where we are talking today about bdd and amongst the lot of agile teams lot of discussion is happening and soon uh, within agile teams within organizations uh, there will be lot of expectation from testers developers whether they understand this process of behavior driven development uh, they are able to do some of these tasks like 3 mgo meetings effectively they are able to understand uh, create a set of feature file scenarios using gherkin and whatever this specifications that are put in a tool are they able to glue it to a test automation code and create test automation these skills are getting extremely important and lot of organizations are expecting testers developers to know about the skill that is why we are doing this webinar today if you look at overall behavior driven design process so what happens as soon as user stories are created and the acceptance criteria within those user stories are discussed by a team we call them three amigos product owners testers developers and during their discussion getting the concrete examples they convert those examples into a executable format using gherkin semantics and then they the more technical testers will come there and because gherkins are all domain languages they are english like languages now you have to glue that english like syntax to more technical syntax that is a step 3 and then to really test using exercising the application either a api through api or a through graphical user interface a tool like selenium or apm or uh, a rest assured will be used that is how we have the process happens so just to go quickly so whatever i told the same thing happens here so acceptance criteria must be identified by product owners testers and developers working together and that has itself lot of advantages because uh, nobody will live in their own ivory towers everyone is able to talk through a common language not only talk through common language capture their conversations into a very english domain language and that script itself is being used to automate further okay so examples of acceptance criteria so as i told you uh, a typical gherkin syntax follows what we call given when then syntax so what is that really given some initial context when i do something or when an event occurs with the software then i am expecting this typical the test case language is being used so every uh, discussion about acceptance criteria they will be converted into various feature files every feature file can have many scenarios based on the complexity of the user story and acceptance criteria so typically uh, this is how uh, a specification is written about a feature using a language like very everyone can understand it is uh, a ba can easily understand and now if the if this script is taken and some extra code is added till a little bit technical jargon will be added by developers and testers but still when i read the script a business analyst also can understand the script because the flow code is attached to this script only so so what happens is that the features are defined in gherkin and that is done by testers 
we product owners developers so that doing that activity requires a lot of good testing skills and domain skills that is why i am telling that all manual testing the old way of testing is dead and uh, they are irrelevant today some people try to argue that it is not at all true because if your bdd has to be successful the quality of your feature files the quality of your scenarios how well you have done your three amigo meetings how well you have created those concrete examples and converted them to specifications is an extremely important thing that's where the good testing skills are very very important but using those feature files now we want to convert them into a little bit more technical artifacts then technical skills are needed you may have to understand programming languages like java or ruby to glue code use in the step definitions and then if you want to execute these specifications from some interface uh, on an application under test then you may have to use some support code some libraries for selenium apm or uh, rest assured that skills are required so both testing skills and technical skills are needed to kind of properly implement bdd inside teams please keep it in mind so this is my last slide so we have talked very very briefly about what is bdd at a from a very high level so now again i have a knowledge check for you so please participate so let me read the first point business analyst dev means developer and tester have different perspectives so collaboration between them on user stories and acceptance criteria before coding is very useful agree or yes 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 agree yes agree that conversations at that time by those people are extremely useful if you don't do and jump to coding nejail we use always a word we create technical debt and technical debt is very expensive so that is why these conversations are very important so the next one is using given when then is bdd yes or no yes is bdd okay it is no do you use lot of people tell bdd means ah given when then is bdd no it is not bdd is a process bdd is the culture bdd requires some mechanisms like pmgo meetings uh, example mapping kind of meetings Uh, by right people and it is about uh, concrete examples it is about uh, putting all those conversations that happen into a set of specifications and figure out to make them executable this is all bdd that one aspect is converting them into a ubiquitous language like gherkin so don't keep in your mind If somebody ask bdd lot of senior people in the industry tell me that ah bdd i know it is given when that no it is not as simple as that so that is why it is not the third one is devs and testers must develop scenarios feature files no 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 no, no. 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 all three of us should involve stakeholders yes developing bdd scenarios and feature files is the responsibility of a tester yes Mm. No. 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 of the team. It is not only the responsibility yes. of Esther. Esther may give his or her perspective by giving real-world concrete examples of usage of the feature or user story. Two. A lot of good questions they will ask. Oh yeah. That's why we are doing this. 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 manual testing yes or no no yeah bdd is not uh, no, no, no. bdd is an approach to test first and actually automate first using uh, team collaboration by using what we call simplification exactly okay bdd is a process of discovery formalization automation and feedback between the team yes. so that is the definition of yes. yes yes okay so i try to at a very high level cover uh, what are the issues of 
agile test automation challenges and if we stick to uh, the old way of agile automation we cannot achieve the ci cd objectives if we want to achieve ci cd devops objectives you must look at automation differently so there are methodologies like tdd atdd bdd approaches so bdd is very one of the very popular approaches uh, expectations for testing teams development teams about the knowledge of bdd is increasing so it is time for people to understand learn this and there are very good tools such as cucumber and uh, concordion and many other tools uh, to enable bdd teams so please look at it so i am stopping at this time and handing over to uh, swagata for doing a demo about bdd hey, thanks a lot madhu that was a great explanation uh, i'll start uh, sharing my screen <clears throat> Let me know when you can see this. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. So uh, first of all, this is definitely going to be a demo. We'll go to the board. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Um, now, before going to the code, I would just like to, you know, uh, make you understand a few more things. So, this demo that we will be having is about the implementation of VDD using Cucumber with Java and TestNG. So, what Java is, like most of you know, it's just a programming language which is platform independent. So, wherever your tests are running, that will be immaterial like it will run on linux it will run on mac it will run on windows okay now what is test ng now test ng is nothing but a unit test framework which uh, helps you organize the tests it provides a mechanism to execute the test in a defined order and it provides a mechanism for reporting and custom reporting also okay and cucumber as uh, madhu already uh, explained it is just a tool of bdd there are several other tools and it's a framework that provides a way to organize the requirements as feature files provides a given when then construct to write the requirements and provides a mechanism to tie up each requirement to a piece of code that translates the requirement into executable code okay now um, let me first uh, show you a demo okay then we will go to the code and see what's happening but before we go there i would just like to tell you what we are going to demo so there is a website called automationpractice.com so many of the people who are learning automation they go to this website they register themselves and they can just you know play around with the code okay and uh, there are some good stable features which they can use to practice their automation so we will be navigating there we will be checking the login logout functionality for multiple browsers we have kept mozilla and firefox for now and then we will verify the create address functionality for multiple browsers mozilla and firefox again okay so with this let me uh, go to the demo so this is my eclipse okay and uh, I will explain all the things uh, till later, but understand this. This is the test ng XML file. So wherein I have configured it to run the Cucumber tests. These are nothing but the feature files, which is the login logout feature. I will explain them again, how they have to be written. This is another feature called add address, okay? and uh, my application properties are stored here this is the website link this is the username and this is the encoded password it's a it's always a good practice to encode the password so that uh, for security reasons uh, the client would not like even the test parts passwords to go out and specifically if you are working on a production environment it is always better to use encoded passwords now okay now with this let me first run this code and see what happens okay i'll be running it as a test ng suite so as soon as i start running you will see that uh, you know one browser will kick in 
So first, Chrome will kick in. So we have navigated to the automationpractice.com website. It will try to log in now. Okay, it has logged in and it has logged out. Now the same test will be repeated for Mozilla. You see that Mozilla has kicked in now. Okay, so it is automatically going to that website. It's repeating exactly the same flow. The same code can be used to test for multiple browsers. All you have to do is you have to tell it that, okay, now you execute for Mozilla and you execute for Chrome. You can extend the number of browsers you want to check also. That's perfectly possible. Now the first feature file is over. Now we are going to the second feature file. So the second feature file will open the browser. It will log in. Here is a login process happening. Now it will go to the my addresses and it will create some address. And it has now verified that, okay, this address is created. Now it will log out. Same flow again will be repeated for Mozilla. Be patient, we will all explain that how things are happening. Okay, so again, another set of address is being put in. Okay, this time also it has verified that the address that is created is correctly updated and the tests have ended. So you see that this is the just uh, an information that is provided by the test ng plugin for Eclipse that okay, both my features have run successfully. First features, feature was login and log out on my store. And the second feature was user can create an address. If there were any errors, it would show up in red and the failure exception would have been shown here. Okay. Now I will go to, um, the folder wherein uh, there will be the code okay so okay let me first show you the output okay so how it looks like so you will see that in test output there is this one output okay this is the test ng's default result is for default HTML it is it does not look that good okay but this is just one report it does not even explain that you know what all tests have been run so it will just tell you that one test okay when you click on this it will say that okay this is that my store UI smokes selenium cucumber one class one group okay that's all it does not know much now there is a better report available which is Padi. This is called the cucumber. Cucumber has its own reporting mechanism. Now this is little better than that. So you see that all the features are kind of explained. Okay, uh, what all parameters were there? Okay, and uh, the result is first scenario took 58 seconds to execute for both the browsers. Second scenario executed for 62 seconds. Okay, with this now let us go and see a third type of custom report. How it is? So you will see that my framework, it uh, uses the home directory, which is uses my name and it will make a folder and it will create all the results here. So this is extent report. Okay. Now extent report, it will show that, okay, this test was run for fun Chrome. Then it was run for Mozilla. There is for the, just the login logout. And when you talk about the uh, add address test. So this address alias was successfully added and was displayed. And as a proof, here's the screenshot automatically taken by the framework. And this is another set you know, where in for Mozilla, it also, it created the same address with another alias. So this is another proof that, okay, this was also displayed properly. Okay. Now this is called extent report. It's a very uh, user-friendly report. It's very easy to implement also. 
so now uh, let me go to the code and explain that you know where is what okay but uh, before I do that I would just like you to understand this so you see this so cucumber will tell you that okay now this is a feature file and this is how a test scenario should look like so there is a scenario outline uh, there is something called a scenario and a scenario outline so when you are passing parameters to a scenario then you have to use scenario outline so whichever parameter you are passing so right now for me the parameter is only the browser okay so i'm putting in chrome and mozilla so first it executes for chrome second it executes for mozilla i can extend it as simply by just increasing one more line and saying that okay now i want to do it for opera also okay that is perfectly doable now what it does is um, but java does not understand that what does this feature file mean when you say okay given user is using a browser or you say that when user clicks on sign out link or say user comes back to authentication page, what does it mean java doesn't know right so what we will need is we will need some step definitions also so for this statement that given user is using a browser so there is an equivalent step definition okay wherein we it's just the format of writing where we say that when what to do when it encounters this statement of uh, user is using um, a browser so it gets browser as a parameter and based on this parameter it will just get the browser instance so there are some predefined functions inside my framework which helps it do that okay but wait a second so this is like okay now i know the step definition fine but when there are a lot of feature files and step definition does it need to be tied down one by one it's such a tedious process like there could be thousands of and hundreds of uh, feature files and step definitions so what is the way out now test ng okay so has a runner that it defines that okay here are your feature files which can be glued to the step definitions which can be found in this package now what cucumber will do is it will find out all these feature files within this location it will keep on executing with the help of the steps that are found in this location if some step is not mapped to a code it will simply not execute and it will say that okay now i can't do anything about this because i don't know what this means okay so it's as simple as that so now java understands that what to do when uh, these statements are encountered that okay given a user is using a browser what a user is successfully logged into my store and it also knows that where to look for the mapping so any number of scenarios any number of feature files most welcome it can handle it so i'll now uh, just navigate back to the code so this to tell you this is again these are the feature files okay and this is the step definition so let me uh, go through the step definitions one by one so you will see that uh, step definition is nothing but a java class which just extends the cucumber runner okay so that's why cucumber runner class will know that okay the here are my step definitions um now it see there are a lot many statements here a lot many functions at the rate given means this is a given type of a statement okay given feature id is something okay? given user is using so there can be multiple given type of statements which can be reused across feature files there is not a problem in that it's not necessary that uh, one given statement cannot be repeated on other feature files it can very well be repeated and here are all the vents okay all the vents are here mapped and then there are all the thens so like this 
uh, it's not necessary that you have to cram the code all into one class you can keep it segregated into different class as per your wish uh, it's just the location that the cucumber runner will need to know and whatever classes are there in that location it is smart enough to identify which class this uh, function will be there which maps back to a particular statement in the feature file and here is the cucumber runner so all it has is there are some cucumber options you have to set in which you have to mention the features where are the features and where it will be glued to so glue is the package name where all the code is there which will be acting in the background for executing the feature statements all right so within this uh, as testng provides it, this is just a stub although but before class before method after method after class all these things can be mentioned here if there is any specific need okay so um, this is uh, you know all about the demo i'm open to uh, questions in a while so before that let me just tell you that uh, there are some facts about bdd i would just like to reiterate that bdd does not up only apply to ui test it is it can equally apply to api test also or even unit test it's up to us so whatever features we write there should be some code to tie back to it that's all so when madhu said that uh, for test driven development tests are written before the code is even written so it is imperative that i mean unless the code is written there will be no ui right so unless there is a ui then how is that we are going to automate anything we can't automate right so ui test can come later but before that api test can come because api gets stabilized much before the ui does so i just wanted to give you this perspective so that you can now relate to how come the test automation can be done before the code is even completed so coding part that ui coding part is different uh, thing but underlying api is another layer which can be easily automated so bdd can be implemented using several tools and combination of tools like you uh, this demo is about java testng and cucumber similarly for c sharp there could be spec flow okay and in a combination of n unit so bdd is being embraced by the industry especially by the agile development teams and development teams include testing teams also it again as uh, as you said i'm just reiterating that it bdd is again a culture it's a process it has to be uh, adapted by all the teams i mean which includes a testing team development team business team and in devops culture it's the operations team also okay so um now i open the forum for the questions so please feel free if you have any questions anyone so there is a question in the uh, message box by raju mm -hmm. why don't you address that okay sure i missed that thanks for noticing this okay so what what are what is the tool for php so uh, firuz can you be a little more specific about your question can cucumber support php so see cucumber has uh, you see like uh, there is php unit is there so uh, cucumber supports multiple language bindings okay so java is not i'm sorry right now they have released versions for ruby and java yes i don't yes. know yeah. i was coming to that so, ruby is the prime one okay and uh, java is another okay, right now so anything else anyone firoz does that answer your question but i would also like you to know that um, Cucumber is working hard to increase its language binding coverage to many other languages, many other preferred languages for coding for uh, the community. 
Feroz, I'm not able to hear you. I'm sorry. So uh, maybe there is some technical glitch, but you can keep uh, typing your comments or questions here. I'll try to answer. In the meantime, anyone else has any question? By the time Feroz uh, maybe is typing his. OK, you are using Drupal PHP, all right. Okay. Anyway, um, by the time uh, Firuz, you you keep typing questions, I'll I'll uh, I'll get back to you. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Anyone uh, else? I I heard another voice. <clears throat> Anybody else was uh, trying to say something? Uh, Swagata. Yeah. Go ahead. See, uh, in I just I have wound out. See in hmm. agile also now before going to user story or uh, spring, see developer team, develop and tester team and product owner, everyone will interact. The same hmm. they'll also follow what are what we need to do and the acceptance criteria, everything they'll follow. Hmm. So what is the difference between this one? Even here also we are following three M go. It's just uh, terminal has changed, but the process it looks like same only. So what yeah. is the difference? The difference is that uh, the focus of this three amigo meeting or the example mapping kind of meeting is to yes. look at each user story and uh, even uh, agile also will no, look into each no, no. user story. Uh, yeah, the, but uh, actually you will do that. But uh, you have to create what we call concrete examples and create these files, feature files, and scenarios based on that conversation. Yes. Even uh, all these feature for how many feature files within those feature file scenarios and you have to capture them in a tool like cucumber which will be used for testing and test automation so okay. in other meetings the focus is not to develop this specification concrete examples based specifications which meeting does that okay okay so, now uh, just just to add to what mother was saying I would just like to mention. Madhu, go ahead. Go ahead. You finish it first, then I'll say. Yeah. So what I'm telling is that people using BDD at the right time, like uh, in Agile, typically product backlog refinement meeting happens. Different yes. meetings people do. But uh, in BDD, whatever meeting they do, the purpose is to the output from the meeting should be a set of Specification by examples captured in a tool like either Concordion or uh, Cucumber, which will drive the test automation. That is the only thing. Yes, a lot of meetings happen, but yeah. if you are using PDD, you have to write after those meetings the specifications. Sir, if you don't make, can you give me with example, live example, then I'll understand. And so it's let's like say you are. Uh, are you participating in agile teams already? No, I have actually I have done uh, classes in agile. So even live yeah. itself I have done actually. So, uh, so okay. let's say there is a product owner, there is a tester, yes. there is a uh, developer. Developer. Already user stories have been done. Okay, now yes. they came to the meeting room and they chat. Yes. And the purpose yes. of this meeting is to look at the user story. Look at that acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria. Look at, yes. Look at that and then think what examples can I take? How user will use? Like say, yes. for example, uh, you 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 are a, as a team you are trying to create uh, some refund policy in a retailer. Okay. Now, okay. So user returns the material. Refund has to be given. That is the feature. Uh, okay. Now. The team people, tester will ask a question. Okay, fine. Uh, say yesterday somebody bought at 12 o'clock. The 24 hour policy is there. So before this time, they come, can we give refund? Okay, yes, we can give okay. refund. If they, that person doesn't have receipt, should we still give? Then product owner no. will think, okay, 
receipt is a needed if they don't have receipt then they have to show some proof of this sale transaction and okay. once they show it manager should approve then only you have to give it so in this conversation all these examples will come of real world usage of those things now all those okay. things will be captured as given receipt uh, then some uh, diff different thing will come approval by uh, and approval by manager then only referred so yes those kind of things will happen hope oh, but uh, yeah, yeah. that uh, you need this meeting yeah okay okay so yeah. um i hope you you got your answer now right yes 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 okay then i will not further elaborate to that uh pretty much covered but i wanted to say also okay now uh, philos was asking that what is the best tool uh, for uh, php so bhat supports php uh, pretty well so that can be an alternative and balakrishna was asking what are the different tools like cucumber for pdd so there are multiple actually uh, like i said bhat okay then concordian is also there so like that you just you know feel free to google there are multiple other tools uh, available for uh, sbdd okay cucumber uh, being one of the uh, most favorites and the most widely accepted ones but even i mean all of them use this uh, construct which is given when then and uh, just the implementation may be a bit different that's all okay but uh, it it kind of enforces the teams to think and discuss on the lines of a structured requirement writing uh, for say uh, given i do this and uh, there is some other condition then what is the output so it kind of enforces the business team not to write requirements in their own freestyle way and to define acceptance criteria criteria in some you know own ad hoc way so it kind of enforces that everybody follows this once these uh, features are agreed upon the developer also uses these and the tester also uses these for uh, test automation or code development uh, there is uh, one more question from firoz is bdd applicable for all use cases uh, yes firoz whatever can be technically coded bdd is applicable now if something has technical limitations for coding that's a different issue or anything if it may not be like say technical issue also but maybe it is not just fit for automation right suppose there is a captcha right so that is does not really qualify for a great automation thing so that is a one off thing and usually people remove the captcha before uh, testing they disable that so uh, it's generally out of question for automation so unless uh, there are some specific issues like this i think uh, you know bdd serves the purpose for defining so bdd is more of a more of a process and an approach Correct. that will help create a common language very easy to understand dsl uh, english kind of readable language to describe your specifications that you are building in the software and the same specifications are used to automate so once uh, you use this feature files and glue code and also have a report a business analyst or a developer or tester when they read everything is linked to those specifications in fact if you use some tools you, do, uh, you can execute uh, you don't need to go to eclipse and go to test ng the, there that file did not be executed you can execute uh, uh uh feature file itself if it is properly glued yes that's also possible. it is more uh, a, it is more a test first approach uh for the modern agile teams okay see like uh, i mean although we are almost out of time so i'll say run as and cucumber feature so you see that when you have this cucumber plugin for eclipse you can run a particular feature file also just by right clicking and say run as feature feature file so that's what madhu was referring when he said that we can run a feature file okay so i think we are uh, 
you know uh, we have overshot the time a bit but uh, any any more questions quickly or maybe uh, you know you guys can send your questions to contact at devoptrix.com so that we can answer offline okay great not a problem so i'm sorry Dev. i'm that is the contact at devoptrix.com first one please ignore uh, because uh, there was a hyphen missing in the tricks so here is contact at devop hyphen tricks.com okay so this is our email id so please feel free to write thanks a lot for your valuable time and uh, for joining on a saturday thanks a lot and uh, madhu thank you very much for your time really appreciate your guidance and uh, enthusiasm thanks a lot madhu thank you thank anything you. else anyone wants to say okay then uh, we will close this session again thanks for yeah, joining yeah. Have, have a happy weekend everyone okay bye thank you thank you very much